Welcome on this wonderful Sunday morning. It's so good to have you here. Let's ask God's blessing upon us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful privilege to be able to gather in your name and to lift our voices in praise to you. We thank you so much for your power and your grace and the blessings you've given to us especially those that come to us through Jesus. And so, Lord, we have come to give you honor today. And so we ask your blessing upon each person who has assembled here. And now, Lord, we pray that you'll be with those who are traveling, who cannot be with us, that you would give them your protection and those are ill and sick, we ask your blessing upon them. And now, Lord, we ask your spirit and your presence with us in our worship here today. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for coming and being a part of our service here today. It is about Christmas time, so we are singing some Christmas songs. Hark! The Herald Angels Sing.
on the Mount. come to our communion time to share around the table of the Lord and to remember the fact that Christmas really is all about not just a baby in a manger but about the Son of God come to earth he came for a purpose and that is to die for us that we might have life eternal Let's stand as we prepare our hearts and our minds through a word of prayer. And then we invite you to partake of your communion as we sing together this morning in his time. If you did not pick up your communion, feel free to do so during the singing of our song. And then you may partake of your communion anytime you feel free to do so. Thank you, Jesus, for our missionaries who Norco Christian Church are able to support through our prayer and giving. We pray for their safety and all people who are in and around the war torn areas of our world. We pray, we pray that American and all national leaders will do what is moral, honest, and good for our world, and that Christian values will be the foundation of the ideologies they follow. We thank you for our Christian values, and we ask that they will motivate us to help the poor, hungry, and all that are less fortunate than us. Thank you, Jesus, for the diligence of Pastor Alton and who, encur who encourages us to be guided by your truths. Thank you for our music group who leads us in glorifying your name, for your coming here on earth as human, and for your sacrifice of your body and blood for our forgiveness and, ch and chance to be with you for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
You may be seated. Once again, thank you for being here. I, I also want to thank our music group. Um, I, I thought we were going to have them, all of them here this morning um, for the first time for a while. <laughs> uh, but Kessie and Danny flew to Toronto, Canada for a, a first birthday party for one of her nieces' Uh, children, and uh, they were so supposed to fly out last night and be back today, but they canceled their flight. So they're supposed to land in L.A. sometime today. So uh, I, I'm glad it's them and not me. <laughs> uh, uh, but I appreciate so much our music group. They, they come and practice every Thursday night. Then on Sunday, we don't do what we practice, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, they put in a lot of time, and, and I appreciate it so much. So uh, it's good to have Bob and Joanna back with us. And uh, so... Thank you all for being here. Christmas. It is that time of year again. Uh, the year 2023. Nearly over. Wow. But, but Christmas is, for most people around the world, an enjoyable time. I realize that is not true for all, and, and sometimes there is a lot of sadness that the holidays bring, but, but overall, for most people around the world, Christmas is an enjoyable time. Um, my wife was just telling me she'd read an article about some psychologists telling you not to let your children believe in Santa Claus. It'll warp their mind. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now, now we all know what happened to all of us. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, for most families around the world, in some way, shape, or form, uh, Christmas is enjoyable because we build some kind of family traditions around Christmas. And I think I know why Christmas is such an enjoyable time. And, and it's, it is because of family and friends and traditions. But the reason Christmas stands out from all of the other holidays in our minds, I am convinced above even the more important things like food and family, lights. <coughs> lights makes Christmas enjoyable. We, we enjoy the glitter and the comfortable feeling that all the colored lights give us. There isn't another holiday that, that celebrates with all of the colored lights and the comfortable feeling that those give to us. Now, I realize that other people have begun to decorate their houses for other holidays, especially Halloween, with, with lights. But you know where they got that, don't you? From Christmas. Last year, my grandkids came over and walked around the block with me. And we were able to look at all of the lights close up and personal. 
uh, we, we usually just drive by them in the car, and if something catches our attention, we may stop and look at it. But w when you can just walk all the way around the block and take your time and go slowly, it's fun to just watch the lights. Light is a good thing. Now, I happen to be lucky enough to have three telephone poles <laughs> on my property where Pat and I live. One of them has a transformer on it. And, and a few years ago, that transformer blew out. and All of our lights went out for 24 hours. And we, we did use some candles and a cell phone or two. Um, but candles don't produce much light. Did you ever notice that? <laughs> uh, this summer I found out that I had a distribution box for three houses for the electricity in our block in the middle of my front yard just a foot or so below the surface of my, my lawn. Um, the underground power lines run under, underneath my lawn and my neighbor's electricity went out and so they dug up my lawn and turned off my electricity for a period of time. And and, and the difference between a 100-watt bulb and a candle is strikingly significant. <laughs> we live in a world that thinks they have been enlightened by science. Some think they have been enlightened by technology. Others think they have been enlightened by philosophy or psychology. And as important as all of those things may be in our society, they're like a candle compared to the light that God has given us through Jesus Christ. And, and our technology that we have today is absolutely amazing. If you want to know just about anything nowadays, just ask your telephone. <laughs> or log on to YouTube. Somebody, I told my wife the other day, somebody in this world has had enough ego, have been egotistical enough to think they had to make a video about it. Whatever it happens to be. And then once in a while, uh, the other day I was looking for some reviews. You can usually find reviews on everything. But I was looking for re reviews on something the other day that I just could not find. And to this day I've not found any reviews. But when it comes to the enlightenment of the soul, compared to Jesus, the enlightenment which the world gives pales to that of Christ. The world's enlightenment compares only to the light of the candle, while Jesus shines as bright as the noonday sun. Gift the water of life, we have been gifted with the light of the world. That's what Christmas is all about. We've been gifted with the light of the world. No wonder we like to celebrate Christmas with lights. And so I want to talk about this morning three great benefits of being gifted with the light of the world. Now I've printed this, I think, in your bulletin. I, I printed more than I'm going to read. Um, but the first thing the first benefit we have by being gifted with the light of the world is that we'll never walk in darkness. Now, John, and, and I'm taking off 
from Peter for the Christmas holidays. So I'm, I, Peter, I, I found Peter kind of hard to put Christmas into it. And, and John just does a better job of, of recording the things of Christ. And so I wanted to um, diverge from Peter today. <clears throat> but John, the eighth chapter, beginning in verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I, I, I've printed the rest of this passage in your bulletin for your reference, but verse 12 is what I want to take time to emphasize this morning. Beginning at the time of of which this passage refers. It was only a matter of days until what John says Jesus' time would come. Jesus often said, my time has not yet come. What he was referring to was his death on, on the cross. Just prior to this, the Jews had sent temple guards out to arrest Jesus and bring him back to them. But when the temple guards came back without Jesus, the temple guard or the the priests asked the temple guards, "Where is he? Why didn't you bring him back?" And you know what the reply was? No one ever spoke like this man. No one ever spoke like this man. He had, he had pierced their hearts. Jesus' message had enthralled the guards. His message had caught them up into an intellectual realm that they had never experienced before. And when the temple priests asked them why they had not brought Jesus back, they could only reply, no one ever spoke like this. The thing that I want us to hear in this passage are the words of Jesus as he spoke to the people, I am the light of the world. Those words are full of meaning, yet they are so simple and poignant. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, my experience is not only as a minister, but as a photographer have taken me through some wonderful and beautiful experiences of life. Some of them, and, and more than I had thought I ever would, but many of those experiences have been once-in-a-lifetime experiences, something you probably will never have the opportunity to go back and do again, especially when you get to my age. <laughs> um, but... If you were to ask me if I would do most of them again, I would say yes to most of them. Now, I have one event almost exactly two years ago. This coming Wednesday, I would just live <laughs> not experience again. Yeah. Uh, I hope that's only a once-in-a-lifetime experience, too. I <laughs> uh, However, one of those better experiences was November of 2016. I was just about to turn 71 years old at that time, but that didn't matter at that time. 
I could keep up with my 35-year-old son and Rudy and Ruth Kozak, both younger than I, so I decided that I would get permits to hike to the subway in Zion. Probably to this day, the most difficult hike I ever took. This would be my second experience hiking the subway. I was two or three years younger the first time when just Danny and I had gone together. The hike to the subway is a nine mile round trip uh, over very rough terrain with no trail. It is a wilderness area and you often have to wade through water and climb over rocks and sometimes climb up and down the side of a mountain and to make your way upstream into an absolutely beautiful setting called the subway. It really is a narrow slot canyon that in certain areas looks very much like a subway tunnel. If you have been watching the pictures on the screen, you have seen that. When, when Danny and I hiked this the first time, I was in a hurry most of the day because I knew that hiking nine miles and rough terrain and time to photograph that train was going to take us most all day long, especially in November when your days are shorter. And it did, 12 hours of hiking and photographing. But my reason for being in a hurry was that last quarter of a mile, that, that climb up the side of the mountain. And, and I've told you about it before, but the first time, I made sure we got back in time that we would not have to do it in the dark. But this time, I was with Rudy and Ruth, and Rudy didn't seem to be in a hurry, so I was rather comfortable in thinking that if we got back in the dark, I guess if Rudy doesn't mind going up the hill in the dark, I'll go with him in the dark. It, the, the, the subway is usually filled with photographers. The, the first time Danny and I went there, there must have been 40 or 50 other photographers, all kind of in the same area. And this time, however, Rudy and Ruth and Danny and I were the only photographers there. Now, we had a couple of hikers that came. They, they came up behind us, pulled out their cell phones and took some pictures and they were gone. It's the last time we saw of them. How, however, I've, I've been reading over the last few, few weeks of stories of how people recently have been caught up in flash floods in that area and had to be rescued. As I think back, I recall that it was a very overcast and cloudy day that day, the whole day that we made that hike. Maybe someone else knew something we didn't know. Uh, we, however, had picked up our hiking permits from the ranger's office just the evening before. And if, if they knew at the time that it was dangerous to be hiking because of flash floods, I, I would have thought they would have mentioned something to us. So I, I still attribute the miracle of being the only photographers there to God he gave us a very rare experience for photographing that day. We could go wherever we wanted without being in somebody else's photograph and vice versa. But I still felt rushed as we headed back down the canyon toward our exit up the side of a mountain. The sun was already making its descent down behind the horizon, and it was getting dark quickly. 
As we approached the foot of the mountain, we still had a quarter of a mile to climb up the side of the mountain, and, and then another quarter of a mile to the parking lot, or more. Yeah. All I can say is once I got up that side of that mountain, I thought it was 10 miles to the car. <laughs> But now I knew we were going to have to climb the side of that mountain in the dark. Now, remember, there's no trail. Now, there's kind of a worn area, and, and you can kind of follow that if you can see it. We turned on our headlights and started that long trek up the side of the mountain. The farther we went, the darker it got. The rocks and the trees began to fade dimmer and dimmer into the blackness of the night. There was no light from the moon in the sky. We tried to focus our lights where we thought we should go, often hoping we would had made the correct turn several yards behind us as we climbed over rock after rock. About halfway up the mountain that night, I was struggling with the weight of my camera equipment on my back. What trail there was had become almost unrecognizable in the dark. In the blackness of the night, the precariousness of our situation began to concern me and a tinge of fear and lostness crept into my mind. And then Suddenly, one of our lights lit up one of the most encouraging sights we could have hoped for at the moment. It was the image of an arrow that someone before us had etched into the rock just in front of us, indicating that we indeed were headed in the right direction. That arrow glistened in the light of our bright headlamps. There could not have been a more encouraging sight for the moment. And there was one more very encouraging thing that accompanied all of us as we climbed that mountainside in the blackness of the night. And that is we were all together. There are two things that John writes for us in this passage that are definite words of encouragement. Jesus said to the people, in the blackness of their society, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. As I climbed that mountainside in the blackness that night, there was no moon. No light in the sky. There were two things, though, that encouraged every grueling step of the way. One was the very bright headlamps that we all wore that night, and we had several of them. We, we were not able to decipher the path well, but we could all see well where we were, right in front of us. But the other thing that was an encouragement was knowing that we were not alone. I, I would have had a great deal more concern had I been by myself trying to climb that mountainside in the dark. And Jesus promises us Whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And the second benefit we have by being gifted with the light of this world is that we will not die in our sin. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 21. Once more... Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, 
will he kill himself? Is that why he says, where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you, they asked. Just what I've been claiming all along, Jesus said. I have so much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable, and what I have heard him Heard from him, I tell the world. I tell the world. Now the results of dying in your sin is that you cannot go where Jesus goes. That's what Jesus meant when he said to the Pharisees, you can't go where I'm coming. He, they said, well, maybe he's going to commit suicide and we don't want to go with him there anyway. That's not what Jesus meant. Jesus meant, if you don't believe in me, you will die in your sins. And if you die in your sins, you can't come where I'm going. They rejected the Messiah that had come to save them. It's interesting to me that mankind spends billions and billions of dollars and all other kinds of currency around the world to keep our bodies physically alive and well on earth. Why, they will even give you a free COVID-19 and flu shot. If you dare take it. Yet we spend meager amounts in comparison to keep our soul alive and well. We rearrange our physical schedule so we can keep our appointment with the doctor. with our physician. But, but way too often we rearrange our appointment with our spiritual healer on Sunday mornings so we can go do something that our physical world wants us to do instead. And then we sit back and we complain why the news is so negative. We, we wonder why the world is in the condition it is. We wonder why we can't turn on the news without hearing some news about another mass shooting in our country. The reason? The soul is not well. The soul is not well. Someone who knows me pretty well asked me some time ago when we both just happened to be at Sixth Street Deli. Why is the news always so full of negative stuff? Now, as I recall, I said something quite pr probably unmeaningful. I don't remember exactly what I actually said, but afterwards, after having some time to think about it, I, I wish I had said because too many people have missed their appointment with their spiritual healer. So the soul is not well. Jesus told the, the Pharisees that they would die in their sin because their soul was not well. They rejected the remedy and died in their sin. That was the way that Jesus described their neglect and their rejection. 
But that also implied the reverse. For the one who does accept me as the Messiah from above will not die in your sin. And, and so that brings me to point number three, the third benefit we have by being gifted with the light of the world is we will never have to walk alone. Now, now Jesus doesn't say that to us directly. He, he's already told us that we will walk in the light and not have to walk in the darkness. But he also implies by something that he says here that we will not have to walk alone in that darkness in that light even. And this is the way John records it. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father in John 8, verse 27. Verse 28 then says, So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. For I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. A loneliness is a difficult situation in life. There are times that we enjoy being alone for a period of time. This past summer I accomplished one of my, after I broke my leg goals. <laughs> that, that, that was to hike three miles out in the desert in New Mexico and fa photograph the Milky Way in a very unusual place, and then hike those three miles back again, a place called Beastie Badlands. Somebody asked me if it's Beastie or Beastie, I said, I don't know. I just like the way Beastie sounds better than Beastie. <laughs> uh, But I like to go to Beastie Badlands to photograph because I know that when I go there, I'll be able to find a place that no one else is. Now, the, the place that I may want to be might have someone there, but I can always find another place where no one else will be. And there I will enjoy photographing the Milky Way and spending hours taking one photograph after another. And when I am done, I will have recorded most of the activity of, this, of the stars during that night. And I will have enjoyed being by myself, sometimes with one or two other people. This past summer, I had the wonderful privilege of enjoying that experience with my son part of the evening with my grandkids and his wife. But there is something that I enjoy even more than just spending that time photographing the Milky Way alone under the stars. And that is to be able to share that experience with someone else. And to know that we do not have to walk alone. Jesus said, the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. As the people of Israel were preparing to enter the promised land, they were fearful of what lay ahead of them. And Moses encouraged them with these words as he records them in the book of Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter. Verse 6, he said to the people, Be strong 
and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And the Apostle Paul quotes that passage in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, speaking to us as Christians and reminds us that God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. As we come to Christmas time this year, we are faced with a world that as Christians, we do not particularly like all the time. We know that there are those who are running things in parts of our country who have no light to walk by. And who has a soul that needs a lot of healing. But Christmas time is a time that we are reminded that when we know the light of the world, we can be sure that we will not walk in darkness, nor will we ever walk alone. It is invitation time, and it's time to invite you to get to know the light of the world. Gift the water of life. We've been given and gifted with the light of the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful gift that you've given to us as the light of the world. And as we come to this time of Christmas that you would help us to put our minds upon the Lord and Savior who came to give us life, to heal our soul, and to be the light of the world. And so if there's anyone here who needs to come and make a decision for you, and to give their life so that you might heal their soul, that this would be that opportunity for them to come. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. If you have a decision to make for Christ, come as we stand and sing together our hymn of decision, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
may be seated. We have coming up just next week, one week from today, um, and that's our Christmas soup luck. I hope you'll plan to just bring out some favorite soup that you have or some soup you like. Probably not a good idea to bring soup you don't like. <laughs> if you don't like it, maybe probably no one else will either. I don't know. Um, anyway, we always have a great time uh, sharing different kinds and different flavors of soup. Um, I, I've been trying to get Jason from Pizza Fans. To, I said, hey, we're having a soup look next Sunday night. I said, why don't you make some soup and come join us. He started thinking about some kind of soup he'd like to make. So uh, I, I doubt if he'll come, but he was thinking about it at least anyway. Uh, anyway, but... <laughs> They bring pizza, <laughs> pizza soup. <laughs> I, I could tell him you said pizza would be fine. He, he, he's a cook. He likes to do all kinds of stuff. So um, anyway, uh, we always have a good time on, on uh, our soup luck. So I hope that you'll plan to come out 530 next Sunday evening and, uh, and join us. And then just two weeks from... Gee, Monday is Christmas, so uh, from two weeks from tomorrow. Um, so we'll have our Christmas service, some special things I have planned for you. So uh, we'll share that on Christmas Sunday, on the December 24th, that is. So uh, Christmas Eve on Sunday this year. So... I hope you'll plan to join us for, for that Sunday at 9 o'clock. And uh, that's, I think, all that I have except board meeting. Board meeting, this is a board meeting Sunday. I don't know if we have enough people here. I guess we do. Um, so, yeah. Stuck somewhere in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, board meeting uh, after service. So, all of your board members show up at the back. In a few minutes and uh, we hope that you will have a wonderful Christmas so let's stand and sing together our closing song for today and that is I've got a mansion over the hilltop
God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Mm-hmm.